Welcome to another Hast Assistant video. Today I'll be walking you through the setup procedure for my latest GitHub project, Open Assist. Open Assist combines the power of OpenAI and Pinecone, allowing you to control your Home Assistant entities through ChatGPT. If none of what I just said makes sense, here's a quick demo showcase in the final product. Turn the far loft light red, the center loft light yellow, and describe what Home Assistant is in one sentence. The far loft light has been set to red and the center loft light has been set to yellow. Home Assistant is an open source home automation platform that focuses on privacy and local control allowing you to control all your smart devices from one place. Okay, jumping over to GitHub, this is the repo I'll be walking us through today. Before starting, you'll need to ensure you have access to Pinecone IO, OpenAI API, and also MindsDB. I'm sticking with MindsDB once again, as this allows free usage of ChatGPT4 through the API. Everything covered in this video will be listed in the description below, including my GitHub repo, configuration.yaml, and Lovelace YAML for the example grid card. So first, assuming you've got a Pinecone account, make sure you've got a project already created. If not, Pinecone makes it pretty clear how to create one. From here, we need to grab the API key and environment ID from the API keys page. Next, assuming that you've already created a MindsDB account, sign in and head over to the MindsDB editor page. Use this SQL command to create your GPT-4 model. So all we need to do here is highlight all the text and then select the run button at the top of the screen to execute the query. This will then generate the new GPT-4 model. Here we call it gpt 4 Hass. Just take note of this model name for use later on on the configuration.yaml section. Next, head over to OpenAI, assuming you've got an OpenAI account. Go to the View API Keys page, and here all we need to do is click on Create New Secret Key. Give it a name, in this case I'm going to give it the name Open Assist. Then click the green Create Secret Key. Make sure you copy the API key at this point, this is the only time you're going to be able to view the API key. So from here to store it on a notepad or somewhere for use later on. Okay, so let's head over to Home Assistant now. Uh, go to the Hacks page, assume you've already got Hacks. Go to the in Integrations page, and we want to add in the new custom repository. So the repository URL, I'll have linked in the description below. And then the category for this is gonna be Integration. Click Add, and then this should add the integration to the uh, Hacks dashboard. So close this, open a new repository, and once that loads on the bottom right, we just want to click the blue download button. Click that and then hit download again. Wait for the wait for this box to close, and then we just want to go to developer tools, um, check configuration, and hit restart to restart Home Assistant. So once Home Assistant is back online. We need to go to our file editor add-on. Here I'm using Studio Code Server. Uh, go to configuration.yaml. Uh, the first two things I'm going to add here are two input text entities. So the first one is OpenAssist Prompt. This is going to be what we use to send prompts to ChatGPT. Uh, Pinecone Index is what we're going to use for creating the Pinecone Index. So below the two input text entities, we have the actual OpenAssist integration itself. The first variable here is OpenAI API key, so this is going to be obviously the API key we just got from OpenAI. Then we've got the two pinecone variables, first one being the API key, and then below that is the pinecone environment, which I will change in a second. And then at the bottom we have included domains, so this these are the domains that we want to store within the pinecone database to be able to query later on. I'm just going to add media player here on the end as well. Um, and we've also got the light entities and the weather entity. So going back to the Pinecone console, there's my Pinecone environment ID, which I'll just paste into this variable here. And then finally, we just need the variables for our sensor using the platform Open Assist. First one being our name. This will give ChatGPT reference to our name when it's answering questions. MindsDB model. This is the name we gave to our model when creating it in MindsDB. Here we're using GBT4 Hass. And we also need the MindsDB session cookie. To get our session cookie from MindsDB, here I'm just using Microsoft Edge, so I'm just 
press F12 to bring up the developer tools, go to the network tab at the top here, hit F5 to refresh the page. This will generate a load of content within a developer uh, tools page. If we go to the top, uh, we've just got editor there, so I'll click on that, and then we can go to cookies, and we should see at the bottom session cookie there. Um, I, I tap that three times, uh, right click, copy, and then you can just then use that in our setup on Home Assistant. And finally, at the bottom, we've got Notify Device. So this is optional. This is um, the ChatGPT response will be sent to this device. So it could be a mobile device. Um, each response will be shown as a notification on your mobile. Or you could use something like an Amazon Echo. So each response there would be spoken um, via the Alexa voice. All I'm doing here is just going to the services page in Home Assistant to figure out what the Notify entity name is for my mobile so here you can just see everything after the notify dot it says mobile app Adam's phone so I'm just going to copy that go back to studio code editor and paste that in as my notify device so now every response I get back from ChatGPT will be sent as a notification on my phone so once you've done everything there just go to developer tools check configuration to make sure everything's done correctly and restart home assistant so that's the integration pretty much set up now. If we just head back over to the GitHub repo, uh, you'll be able to find an example card we can use on the Lovelace dashboard. So just highlight all of this and copy it. And if we then go back over to Home Assistant, open up one of your dashboards, and on the top right, it goes to Edit Dashboard, Add New Card at the bottom right. Here we want to type in Manual, um, just so we have a space where we can paste in uh, the YAML code we've just copied. So paste that in, that should bring up these four cards here. Click Save and then click Done. So the next step here is to grab your Pinecone environment ID and just paste it on the top box where it says Index Creation. This will then start the process of creating your Pinecone index. Please wait while the Pinecone index gets built. So I'm going to fast forward this a bit as it takes a while to create the index, but if you want to have a look at it happen in real time, on the Pinecone console, go to the index page, hit refresh, and you'll see there it says initializing. So give it some time, it will then turn to the state of ready. You'll be notified throughout this whole process on the Pinecone index status. Also, you might have noticed that I'm using the Piper text to speech for each response that gets sent to the Pinecone index uh, status and that open assist response. This is all done through an automation within Home Assistant, so it's not part of the integration, but if you are interested in having this, I have an automation.yaml file on my GitHub repo which describes how to do this. Two minutes until data upload. One minutes until data upload. 30 seconds until data upload. Uploading entity data. You will be notified once complete. Your Pinecone index is ready to use. Enjoy. So in terms of Pinecone index creation, that's pretty much it. We can now go ahead and run our first query. Um, to test whether this is indeed working or not. So for the first prompt, I'm going to have two actions within the single prompt, just to make sure we can have those multi-actions happen within the same prompt. I have turned the far loft light blue and the centre loft light green. So that first one looked good. Uh, just for another demo, I want to show you that it can also grab the current state of entities. So it's not all about running call services. It can indeed look at the current state of individual entities and give you information on those entities. The current weather state at home is sunny. So there on that example, I grabbed the state of my weather entity and it correctly got the info that at home it is sunny outside. So what I'm going to do on this last one is play Planet Rock on my Loft Echo. So the radio station Planet Rock should then be played on my Loft Echo. That pretty much wraps up this video. The last thing I'm going to show you here is the sensor.py file within my custom component, specifically the section where we give ChatGPT guidelines as to what we need it to do. So this includes guidance on what response ChatGPT should use given the type of question or query it's presented. 
so for you tinkerers out there you might have a bit of fun playing around with this section. Hopefully you found some great use cases for this integration. If you did find this at all helpful please leave a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so to stay up to date on all my latest content.